Akira Toriyama. The first time that I saw his name was when I was in my second grade. At first, I thought the letters Akira Toriyama that appeared on the TV screen were the name of the company that runs the Dragon Ball series. As a Filipino kid, it was a bizarre name in our country. Though, bottom line, one thing is for sure. This Japanese anime television series, Dragon Ball, captured the hearts of Filipino kids, most specifically us, the Batang 90s. I made this video tribute to Akira Toriyama, embodied my message to him and to other manga writers who helped me to become the person I am today. Despite tons of workloads in our office, I continued to complete this video tribute by reason of the fact that I owe this persona a lot for making my childhood memories extraordinary. Even now, I'm living together with their teachings. This took me five sleepless nights to write the script, do some research on the life of Akira Toriyama, and also reminisce about my wonderful childhood memories. To be perfectly honest, I experienced mixed emotions while doing this stuff. I remembered some old friends in primary school, having the same vibe, wherein after watching an episode, we talk about it, and most of us were imitating some cool moves like Kamehameha, the solar flare, and that silly thing taught by Gohan Videl on how to fly, the key control, which I consider the same as the biggest scam in the entire series. When you're ready, start slowly drawing out your energy from within. You see? I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one who secretly performed that key control. Nevertheless, there is no room for excuses for not completing this video tribute. It would be an insult for being a fan of Toriyama for not finishing one's work. So before we go on, let's have a quick look on the life and journey of our hero, Akira Toriyama. Akira Toriyama is a Japanese manga writer, manga artist, and a character designer for video games. He has been a working artist since 1978. In manga, he is better known for creating the science fiction comedy series Dr. Slump and the martial arts theme series Dragon Ball. As a video game designer, Toriyama is primarily known for co-creating the long-running series Dragon Quest. Toriyama's works are credited with boosting the popularity of Japanese animation in the Western world. In 2019, Toriyama was named as a Chevalier or Knight of the Order des Artes et des Lettres, Order of the Arts and the Letters by France. It is a French order of merit awarded to writers and artists. During his elementary school years, Toriyama had access to the manga collection owned by the older brother of a friend. He was fascinated by the science fiction series Astro Boy, which featured the adventure of a sentient android with superpowers. Toriyama attended a high school that focused on teaching creative design to its students. Against the wishes of his parents, he decided to not pursue a college education. Shortly after graduating high school, Toriyama used his art skills to get hired at an advertising agency in Nagoya. He spent several years designing posters but was increasingly fed up with his job. He was repeatedly reprimanded for dressing casually at work. He quit his job at age 23 and started considering a professional career as a manga artist. 
Toriyama's first published work was the story Wonder Island. It featured a kamikaze pilot who had been stranded on an island for 35 years and was trying to find a way to escape. Most of Toriyama's early stories failed to impress his readers. He had more success with Tomato the Cutie Gamshu, a story about a rookie detective. It was his first work featuring a female lead and was well liked by the readers. Toriyama decided to use a female lead in the next major effort, Dr. Slump. It focused on the Arale Norimaki, a sentient robot in the form of a little girl. The series also featured a cast of eccentric supporting characters. Among them was the shape-shifting superhero Superman, a parody version of Superman, who was depicted as a pompous buffoon. The series became one of the most popular manga of its era and received an animated adaption. Kazuhiko Torishima, who is Toriyama's editor, noted that Toriyama enjoyed viewing kung fu films but had never used martial arts elements in his stories. He suggested that Toriyama should try creating a kung fu manga. Toriyama responded by creating the two-part story, The Dragon Boy. It depicted a young martial artist who escorts a princess on a return journey to her home country. The story was warmly received, and Toriyama would later incorporate aspects of this story in the Dragon Ball. In 1984, Toriyama finally concluded the Doctor Slump. He had to promise his editor and publisher that he would soon start work on replacement series. This new series was the Dragon Ball. Toriyama produced 519 chapters of the manga. The story focused on the life of martial artist Son Goku from childhood to adulthood and gradually introduced the character's wife and descendants. The series gained in popularity due to its large cast of colorful characters and its exciting use of combat scenes. Toriyama reportedly used Jackie Chan's films as the main inspiration for the fighting scenes. Despite of a busy working schedule due to a long-term commitment to Dragon Ball, Toriyama continued submitting one-shot stories for publication. In 1995, Toriyama decided to conclude the Dragon Ball manga with a low-key ending. Son Goku left the planet Earth to serve as a mentor to a reincarnated former foe. Toriyama wanted to imply that the story would continue though he had no actual intention to write a sequel at that point. When the animated series Dragon Ball GT was conceived as a sequel, Toriyama was hired as a character designer. In 2009, Toriyama was credited as both a creative consultant and an executive producer for the live-action film Dragon Ball Evolution. Also, in 2009, Toriyama created a promotional manga for the environmental organization Rural Society Project. In 2011, Toriyama helped raise awareness for the victims of the Tohoku earthquake and the subsequent tsunami. From 2012 to 2013, Toriyama was part of the film crew for the animated feature film Dragon Ball Z, Battle of Gods. It was the first theatrical animated film based on Dragon Ball since 1996. In the film, the Didi named Beerus threatens to destroy the planet Earth. Toriyama served as the main screenwriter for the animated film Dragon Ball Z, Resurrection. The film featured the resurrection of the long-dead villain Frieza, who tries to improve his skills before seeking revenge. Toriyama continued to work on the film sequel until 2022. By 2022, Toriyama was 67 years old. He has been married to the retired manga artist Yoshimi Kato since 1982, and they have two adult children. He works from his home studio in Kuyosu, and reportedly lives a reclusive life. March 1, 2024. Toriyama died from an acute subdural hematoma. At the age of 68, 
A funeral was held privately with only his family in attendance. His death was announced by his production company Bird Studio one week later on March 8. According to sources close to Toriyama, he had planned to undergo surgery for brain tumor in February 2024. The news of his death caused an outpouring of grief among admirers of his work, who took to social media to express their condolences and celebrate his legacy. Tributes to the artist were given by One Piece creator Ichiro Oda, Naruto creator Masashi Kishimoto, Video Girl AI creator Masakazu Katsura, and video game designer Yuji Huri. In Tokyo, fans publicly mourned while visiting a life-size statue of Dragon Ball protagonist Goku located outside the quarters of toy manufacturer Bandai. Footballers, athletes, and all used Goku as their inspiration at a point in their career. Today, the football world mourns the death of this legend. Rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. Contrary to popular belief, anime isn't just for kids, especially Toriyama's work. In fact, there are a lot of mature themes in anime that only an adult could understand. These Japanese anime series are way far better compared to Philippine cinema. And no offense to Filipino filmmakers, I'm just spitting out some facts. They said that if you have a problem or any difficulties in life, don't hesitate to share them with others and talk about your problems. Well, I did it several times. However, that piece of advice doesn't apply to me because in my case, I'm an extroverted introvert person. I'd rather choose to stay at home, keep myself busy, listen to my favorite music, have some quality rest, and yeah. Watching the Dragon Ball series is also part of my healing process to cope with these problems of mine. Truthfully, during my college years, whenever I feel down, all I gotta do is grab a penny from my pocket, go to the computer shop, rent for a couple of hours, and watch some Dragon Ball series in countless times. I don't care if I've watched that episode over and over again, even a hundred times, as long as it gives me a lot of motivation. Those are the little things that I did to escape from reality even if it was just a short period of time. That's how the Dragon Ball series impacted my life. That's how Akira Toriyama profoundly changed my life. There is also one anime that motivates me to do better. A character from the Naruto series named Rock Lee. He had this motto, which is very simple yet requires discipline. To be stronger than yesterday, ang maging malakas kaysa kahapon. It is very simple. Don't let a single day pass without learning or doing something that can help for your development or growth as a human person. A day without learning or improving oneself is a day that is wasted. This is one of the reasons why I took a double major degree, took some short courses, and had several postgraduate degrees. I opened myself to different possibilities on what road should be taken that can improve my life. I grabbed every single opportunity that knocked on my door. I imprinted in my mind that the average lifespan of a person is just around 70 years and that 70 years in the long run is just a split of a second compared to the time spent in the entire history of mankind. Iisa lang ang buhay ng tao. Di tayo sigurado kung mayroong reinkarnasyon o pagkabuhay muli. Kaya habang nabuhay tayo sa mundong ito, gawin mo lang mga bagay na gusto mo na may gabay ng Diyos. Gawin mo mga bagay na sa tingin mo makakatulong sa iyo at sa ibang tao. There is no room for excuses and quitting is not an option. Sometimes it seems like the whole thing is pointless. Like I am a loser and I will always be a loser. I do not know what to do! You're right, all the effort is pointless. If you don't believe in yourself... What does that mean? Genius! So I was not born with a whole lot of natural...
natural talent, not gifted like Neji. But I work hard and I never give up. That is my gift. That is my ninja way. It doesn't change. That is not true and you know it. It is not true. Do not then again. You have a gift that Neji doesn't have. Not as flashy, but perhaps even more important. You do not have to make me feel better. Hina, is that you have the gift of perseverance. And that's what makes you a genius, too. True or not, you didn't listen to that. You, you never gave up. Going back to the Dragon Ball series, there is also a character in the said anime that I looked up to. He had a big character development in the continuous series. His name is Vegeta, the Prince of All Saiyan. I truly admired how Toriyama Sensei created this character. Vegeta's pride was mostly fueled by his own ego and arrogance. He assumed because he was assigned royalty that a low-class warrior like Kakarot could never defeat him. However, when Kakarot or Goku reached Super Saiyan, he wasn't going to settle for second best. Despite how hard he was training, Goku was still able to surpass him nonetheless. So he thought if he could go back to his roots, it would make him more powerful. Coming from a ruthless origin, a villain, Having his pride being a prince of all Saiyan, getting bullied by his enemies in general. Then, he met a strong earthling woman who could handle his ego, became a father, raised a child in a Saiyan way. Think about the next threat in a year or five or ten, or think about your pride! If Saiyan blood flows in your veins, if you're my son as you claim! Then I won't tolerate you losing to anyone! You'll be the best, or you'll be nothing! <laughs> time after time, his heart became soft due to the fact that he learned how to love and to be loved. Vegeta is a true representation of an alpha male who doesn't want to do some pointless things, especially on some gay stuff from Kakarot. Isn't he homophobic? He acts like an arrogant nomad, but deep inside he is a loving husband. And a caring father. Sorry, rings. But we don't have any of those now. So fusion's the only chance we have to beat this guy. There has to be some other way. At least tell me there's a method that doesn't require these stupid dance moves. It's the only way to win. So you have to swallow your pride, or the Earth will be done for. <laughs> then I guess the Earth is <sighs> done for. You're saying you're okay with letting Bulla and your darling Bulma die? Sure. Don't you dare try and guilt me into this, damn it! Oh, Alright, fine! Hurry up and teach it to me! It is during the final battle in Buu Saga. At that point, Vegeta already knew that Goku's strength far exceeded him. However, he couldn't understand the reason. He couldn't understand how Goku, who was vastly inferior to himself, could surpass him in strength again and again within the short period of time. And during the Cell Saga, he was completely thrown off from his own traditional Saiyan beliefs when he witnessed Goku's self-sacrifice. Well, after that, he did the same thing. Goku's perseverance is on a whole other level. Even when he was drained of his strength just forcing his body to bring out enough strength to keep fighting against Buu. When Goku saved his life this time around, he finally understood Goku's motivation and why he kept growing in strength leaving him far behind. It was simply the desire to outgrow himself. Not for the sake of fighting others, not for the sake of being the hero, at the same time, Goku also kept holding onto his humanity, which was a trait long forgotten among the Saiyans. 
when Vegeta finally understood this, he finally accepted that Goku was truly superior to his current self. That also showed Vegeta the way he could finally evolve into a truly strong being. That enlightenment during the final battle in Buu Saga caused Vegeta to acknowledge Goku's superiority. is fighting for someone other than himself controlling his own fate <laughs> you are a fool I am going to crush you and throw you into the wind Trunks Bulma might do this for you and yes even for you Kakarot Has he lost his mind or what? It's too much! He could die! Amazing. How do you do it, Kakarot? You've always been like this. Ever since the day I first met you. Always ready to meet the next challenge, even if it's bigger than you are. So we meet at last. We have been expecting you, Kakara. We were beginning to think you wouldn't show. Hopefully now things will get more interesting around here. Super Elite, the Prince of all Saiyans! It was the same on Namek. You had improved so much that it made Raccoon look like he was standing still. Your power had increased so dramatically since our battle on Earth that I thought you had done it. I thought that you had become a Super Saiyan. It tore me apart. How could a low-class soldier accomplish so easily what I, I had struggled my whole life to achieve? Oh. 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 Then at last it happened. I do transform. After living every moment of every day for the singular purpose of surpassing you, finally became a Super Saiyan myself. The Prince had reclaimed his throne and fulfilled his destiny. But no matter how strong I became, your power still exceeded mine. At first I thought it was your loved ones, that it was your instinct to protect them that spurred you on and pushed you beyond your limits. But then I found myself with a family of my own, and my power didn't increase at all. I used to fight for the sheer pleasure of it, for the thrill of the hunt. Oh, I had the strength unmeasurable. I spared no one. And yet, you showed mercy to everyone, even your fiercest enemies, even me. Yet you never fought to kill, nor for revenge only to test your limits and to push yourself beyond them to become the strongest you could possibly be. How can a Saiyan fight like that and at the same time be so gentle that he wouldn't hurt a fly? Oh, it makes me angry just thinking about it. But perhaps it is my anger that's made me blind to the truth for so long. I see it now. This day has made it all too clear. You're better than me, Kakarot. You are the best. Now, as you can see, the previous short clips that I have shown earlier were just a tip of an iceberg of Toriyama's work. 
regardless of being old. I never heard Toriyama retire from his work. Even in his last breath, he never failed us. Maybe some of you will find this video tribute as an exaggerated matter. Well, it's up to you guys. I created this video tribute not for any hype or for views. I'm just a small YouTuber here in the Philippines. It's just like, this is the only way that I know to say thank you to the person who made my childhood memories extraordinary. So in my turn, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to you, Sensei. Saying thank you isn't enough. I will never forget the lessons you have taught, the importance of perseverance. Dragon Ball made us believe in ourselves. It isn't just an anime. It is a journey of growth, friendship, and of endless possibilities. My heart literally dropped when I saw the news on social media that you have passed away. But don't worry, Sensei. If you want to be resurrected, just contact us through Fortune Teller Baba. We are here together with the Z Fighters, willing to search for the Dragon Balls. We already got the Dragon Ball Radar from the Capsule Company. We can immediately summon Shen Long for your resurrection. Though, in my opinion, maybe you should take a rest, Sensei. Just make a quality time. Sit and relax up there together with King Kai. We are already satisfied with your work, Sensei. Your brilliance inspired many souls to continue for incredible work. Just leave it to your students, Sensei. We still have Masashi Kishimoto, Ichiro Oda, Yoshihiro Togashi, and many manga artists that will continue your legacy. Just accept your limitations and ease gracefully into retirement. My limitations can go straight to hell. Goku, Krillin, you're the ones who showed this old fossil he still had something left to give. That it was too soon to let the limits of age sentence him to sit idly by on the sidelines. You boys who were never content to stop, who kept aiming for and climbing greater and greater heights, want me to take it easy? Now listen to me, boys! Uh, Always remember these words. Work hard, study well, and eat and sleep plenty. That is the Turtle Hermit way. We must master the art of peace in addition to the art of war. The Turtle Hermit School will be with you. Always. This will be my greatest, most powerful Kamehameha!
Kasino Udumoy Kidaiga Chubarashkat Ano Wahanatano Kagides Arigato Sensei